Oh my word, can you believe it? Multiple vulnerabilities have been found in the Rust based pseudo clone that ships in Ubuntu. Oh, who could have predicted this coming? It is absolutely crazy. As you know, as you know, it's ridiculous. As you know, Ubuntu has been shipping with Rust based replacements of a bunch of core utilities. Uh, all the GNU core utilities, sudo, that means sudo, date, du, uh, a whole bunch of other things. And there has been a nonstop steady stream of bugs, missing functionality, and security vulnerabilities that have just been pouring in about all of these Rust-based replacements since the very day they got included in Ubuntu. It is just, it's been nonstop. It has been utterly nonstop. And this, this current round of pseudo vulnerabilities are not little vulnerabilities. They're not little itty bitty tiny things. There are two security issues, uh, which one of which could result in the local disclosure of passwords, and the other, a complete authentication bypass in, in multiple different types of configurations. Uh, and this this came about uh, just recently. We just learned about this yesterday. Now, the, the good there's good news. Oh, sorry, there's bad news. There's good news, and then there's more bad news. The The bad news is that now there's a whole lot of machines out there running uh, Ubuntu and versions of Debian that have massive, massive vulnerabilities in sudo itself. That's the bad news. The good news is that they did manage to fix these issues they think. They haven't been overly well tested yet. They got a hot fix out really fast without a lot of great testing. Um, but then comes the rest of the bad news. There's probably a whole heck of a lot more. There's been a steady stream of these and the tools that are in there right now, the rust based clones of sudo and date and du, et cetera. They haven't been that well tested. And we've come to find out that in fact, the development teams behind them, including the teams at Ubuntu who made the decision to include these by default, replacing all the battle tested GNU core utilities and whatnot, they knew that they weren't finished. Not only are they not that well tested, they're not even fully functional yet. Huge portions of functionality don't even exist for a lot of these tools. It's it's absolutely crazy uh, that this is that this is happening, but it's going to keep happening. It's not going to stop. Uh, just to give you a little overview of what we've seen just in the last couple of days and a couple weeks. Um, let's see. We saw. Um, uh, the date command, uh, which is part of the GNU core utilities, which got replaced with the Rust based clones, um, had significant issues that caused automatic system update checks on Ubuntu to fail completely. It is worth noting uh, that the Rust based date clone only passes two of the eight test cases for the utility. That's a 75% failure rate. Um, and, and in fact, a whole bunch of them are even far worse. Uh, here's, <laughs> here's just a bunch, see all those red bars if you're watching the video version? That's just a handful of the pieces of functionality that are tested. And even those small slivers of functionality that are tested of these critical tools like Basenk, uh, Cat, um, uh, Chamod, Date, a whole bunch of others, they are by and large failing. I mean, more often than not, they're failing significant percentages of the tests that exist and most of the functionality is not tested. But that's not surprising because most of the functionality of the tools that these Rust utilities are meant to clone have not yet been implemented. Um, let's see here, what, what do we got here? There were some issues with some uh, uh, sort utilities being 17 times slower than they usually were. Um, oh, the disk utility uh, uh, function, the DU function, it, it actually just wasn't working quite right at all. It's just not a drop in replacement at all. It was, it was returning completely different values than the original that it was supposed to be replacing. And so many issues like that. A sort has the same issues. It just, it doesn't work the same way as the original and doesn't have the full functionality of the original. This is ongoing. And I need to make a few things crystal clear 
about all of this because this problem and, and, and I know it might seem like we're dogging on rust, but this really isn't a rust issue. The problem here is not the programming language being used to make these clones, right? You could probably make great clones of these tools in rust, uh, in C, in Smalltalk, in Python, uh, in, uh, shoot, you could probably do it in Pascal and it would come out great if you really put, put some effort into it. It's not the language that's being used. It's the engineering approach to this. It is a, just a terrible approach. What they've decided to do is take highly functional, really well-tested piece of soft, pieces of software, the GNU core utility pseudo and all those sorts of things, which have been around a long time, and have had many, many bugs and security vulnerabilities over the years tested and worked through and tons, I mean, just innumerable numbers of weird edge cases handled and figured out for dealing with a large variety of Unix-like systems, like our Linux systems. And then we've gone and cloned them, and that's fine. I'm not opposed to rewriting things and whatnot, but we've gone and cloned them and enforced the shipping of the clones before they were ready, right? We've taken a system, our Linux systems. If you use Ubuntu, you know what I'm talking about, that have a huge number of those GNU core utilities that are highly functional that you've come to rely on year after year, decade after decade, and have continued to slowly improve over the years as weird edge case bugs are found and discovered and worked on. An increasing number of systems came to rely on those core utilities, such that they're an integral part of all these Unix-like systems. Now we've taken them and chucked them out. They're gone. And we replace them with utilities that have the same name and try to have the same functionality, but don't. But are literally missing huge pieces of functionality like the date command and others that are just missing huge chunks of functionality. And the, the developers know that. It's not done yet. It's not finished. That's not the developer's fault that it's not finished. It's just simply not finished. It's not ready to ship. Now, if we didn't have those original utilities, those original core utilities sitting there, and we just needed a new date command because we needed one real bad, okay, ship the one that's not quite finished yet. But we threw out something that was working in favor of something that's not. That's not only not finished, but we know is failing 10%, 20% of all the few tests we actually do have. In reality, it's probably failing far more than that if we actually had comprehensive test case coverage on these utilities. So from an engineering management standpoint, we have decided to take functional systems and knowingly break them. No person with significant engineering management experience would make this decision. None. <laughs> you, oh, uh, not unless you have an ulterior motive right? You would not say, I want to break this stable, highly performant, highly secure system that we have in order to what? What's the benefit here? Why replace sudo with a Rust-based clone that's not yet ready? I'm not saying abandon the Rust clone. If you want to build it, build it, but ship it when it's ready, right? That's all we're talking about here. Now, I'm not a huge Rust fan. I, I, think, I think most people um, probably can figure that out by the way I talk about it. I don't love Rust. I, I generally have the same feeling of about Rust as, <laughs> as Brian Kernahan, uh, the Unix and C legend does, who said the following. Oh, Rust. I've written only one Rust program, so you should, you should take all this with a giant grain of salt, and I found it 
a pain. I just couldn't grok the mechanisms that were required to do memory safety in a program where memory wasn't even an issue. The support mechanism that went with it, this notion of crates and barrels and things like that was just incomprehensibly big and slow, and the compiler was slow, and the code that came out was slow. When I tried to figure out what was going on, the language had changed since the last time somebody had posted a description. So it took days to write a program, which in other languages would take maybe five Five minutes. I'm probably unduly cynical, but I'm, I don't think it's going to replace C right away anyway. And that's generally my feeling on Rust as well. That doesn't mean that the issues that Rust have, like the constant state of change and state of flux, the fact that it's not a stable language, and by stable, I mean solidified, like I can come to rely on it, on its syntax, on its structure, on the way the compiler works. You, you can't rely on it yet because it's not there yet. It's not, it's whether you think that that's just a, a side effect of Rust being too young or, a, or because of the way Rust is managed or what have you, it's not ready for many of us to use yet. That's fine. You can still make these, uh, these crazy, <laughs> <laughs> not crazy, these wonderful clones of all the core utilities in Rust if you want to. And if there comes a point where they are more stable, more secure, and easier to maintain all of those things, and more and fully functional, at least at least as functional as the tools they are replacing, then by all means, by all means, put it put it into the operating system. Again, I don't care if it's written in Pascal or Objective-C or Smalltalk or friggin' Fortran or Forth. I don't care. Pick your language. Write it in GW friggin' Basic for all I care. Just make sure that what you're shipping is ready to ship, is at least as good as what you're replacing. If it's not, then don't replace the thing. It's really, really simple. But of course, me coming out and making these sorts of statements will be read as criticism by the Rust people, the Rust fanatics. So much so that people literally talk regularly about uh, how they would like to, quote, fundraise some money to assassinate Lunduk. They talk about this sort of thing regularly. They, they yell nonstop about how Lunduk is horrible and a horrible guy because he, he dared to criticize their precious Rust, so we must assassinate him. Huh. Really? And it's not a cult? You can't criticize Rust, otherwise you need to be threatened with assassination and it's not a cult. I, I remember uh, not just, just days ago, uh, there was people posting uh, all over social media about how software is inherently better the moment it's written in Rust. If you write stuff in C, it's all definitely buggy, but if you write it in Rust, it has no bugs, because once you finish it, it's done and it's perfect. And it's, oh, it's holy from on high. And it's not a cult. And then I come in and I say, mm, that sounds like a cult thing to say. And people will turn around and say, let's assassinate Lunduk. Let's murder him. <laughs> Is that a reasonable response to criticism of the particular usage of a programming language? No, it's not. It's crazy. It's absolutely insane and bonkers. There is literally nothing sane about any of this. The, the engineering management approaches to putting these things in Ubuntu and Debian and all these other systems makes no sense. It's illogical. It's bad engineering management. It's just bad. It's bad job. Everyone who did it, you did a bad job. <laughs> the response from the Rust zealots and Rust community of, of essentially threats of physical violence. This isn't the only one I got. I got a lot of these. I get these every friggin' day. Yeah, no, this one's colorful. <laughs> This one's colorful and came from a person with a rainbow, whatever, you know, little emoji check thing. A lot of them do. Um, w whatever, whatever. I, I get these. Is it sane? Is any of that sane? No, none of this is sane. It's crazy. What's really bizarre to me, really bizarre, is Canonical is sticking to it so far. Which means that over the months to come and possibly years to come, 
This isn't going to end because the, the, the few little bugs I showed you today, which were system breaking bugs, uh, uh, update breaking bugs, uh, scripts got broken because of it. People's uses got broken because of it. Uh, massive security vulnerabilities, all sorts of problems were just in the days following the first release of the mandated Rust clone period of Ubuntu. These are the first few days. What happens over the next few months? It's going to get gnarly. Every person who's worked in project management, every dev lead and dev manager with any reasonable amount of experience is going to look at that going, oh, dang, this is going to get bad. And you know what? And I'm going to be very clear about this. I'm going to repeat this again. It does not matter that the, that the language in use here is Rust. That, that's an irrelevant point. I, I'm like, it's relevant in that the reason this is all happening is because it's written in Rust, because people are choosing to force these utilities in for no other reason than they're written in Rust, right? It's a cult. It's a, it's a religious obligation for them. It's not an engineering decision. They'll try and couch it in, 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 in pretend engineering reasons, but it won't be real engineering reasons. But the, the real core here is you could rewrite all these utilities that we're talking about, sudo and du and ls and everything else in pure C. I love C. You could write right in C. And I would have this exact same criticism of the rewrites if they were not ready to replace the tools that came before. You could use the exact same programming language, but if the clones aren't ready, if there's not a good compelling use case reason for the end users to put those clones in, it doesn't matter if they're written in pure assembly. No, don't ship it yet. Maybe, I don't know, uh, uh, make it as a, an optional beta channel. So, or beta repository. So, uh, you know, cutting edge developers who want to work on it and test it out can test it out. But don't ship it to your normal users. That's a terrible idea. Put it on your production systems. Put it on your enterprise systems. My God, man, what on earth are you thinking? Oh. Uh, of course, me saying that will probably get me more death threats because that's what the Rust Zealots do. Uh, thank you to the Lunduke Journal subscribers for allowing me to, to continue to do this sort of coverage. Uh, go to lunduke.com where you can click on all the links and, and uh, get all the shows and all the things I post wherever you want. I publish all over the friggin' place. Uh, and of course, you can subscribe to the Lunduke Journal if you want to become a paying subscriber and support this work, which you'll note is, uh, there's no sponsors, you know, there's no, this episode brought to you by Square Flugan or any of that sort of thing. Uh, that doesn't happen here at the Lunduke Journal, which means that nobody can tell the Lunduke Journal what to say or what not to say. This is purely... Purely from this noggin right here, <laughs> I can afford to tell the truth because you guys keep the lights on at the Lunduke Journal. It's, it's pretty doggone cool. There, there aren't uh, any other tech news outlets that can really say that. That just that there's, there's no one that exists. That's fine. It's just me. It's cool. Uh, thank you very much to all of you who keep the lights on. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, nerds and nerdettes across the inner tubes, I do declare and broadcast.